year 753 before Christ, after Romulus and Remus had restored their grandfather King Numitor on the throne at Alba Longa. They were granted the land on the banks of the Tiber, which they so greatly loved and cherished. For they had been left as helpless twin babies to live or die. For they had been nurtured by a she-wolf, and later rescued by the shepherd Faustulus, under whose care they grew and became strong and fearless men. On this land they intended to start a settlement, and offer it as a place of refuge to all persecuted men. Since their early youth, the twin brothers had made many friends among the shepherds of Palatine Hill, and each had formed a group of followers. Each group struggled to obtain for its leader the privilege of being founder and king of the new city, which would take his name. Each of the brothers believed that he had been chosen by the gods, that he had been elected for the sacred mission. And both groups acted on the same impulse. It was thought that those who arrived first to the highest spot would have sufficient advantage to enforce their superiority. aware that Romulus had reached the highest hill, pretended that the next height was really the appointed one. Romulus's men surrounded Remus and he knew that they would not accept his false triumph. Considering the numerical inferiority of his group, Remus chose to pretend submission. his defeat filled his heart with bitterness and hatred for his brother. Romulus marked the limits of the new city. A team was made with a cow and an ox, and they were yoked to a plow. The furrow marked the line on which the surrounding wall was to be built and being a symbol of protection against all evils from outside, was to be held sacred and unsurpassable by all. Remus's resentment showed itself by his constant efforts to obstruct the first steps in founding the new settlement. That low wall can't bring protection, so why bother? 
For us, it is a sacred wall, and beware he who dares to cross it. Remus' hatred was shown by him at every opportunity. He ridiculed his brother, the men, and all their work, and he did his best to destroy the enthusiasm that the great task required. A sword awaits you. This will be the fate of anyone who crosses the wall. The settlers worked steadily, harvesting wheat, barley, and millet. The huts of the early days were replaced by sturdier houses, and the city grew, day by day, in beauty and importance. And slowly, commerce and industry flourished. Once prosperity had started, the men built a palace on the summit of Palatine Hill for Romulus, their beloved king. However, something troubled Romulus. His beautiful city had strength and power, but its future was doomed because there were no children. There were no women to make homes and bear children. When the men grew old, who would guard and enjoy the city that he and his followers had built through such hardships? You've asked me to be in readiness to leave the city, Romulus. I am prepared to fight wherever you send me. Forget your weapons, hostess. You're not going to war. This mission is of a different kind. You will go as ambassador to secure women for the Romans. Women? 
Of course, I'm the first to desire them, but how can I get women for all of us? Search for them in the neighboring cities and tell them that we want them to be our wives. They will live in the most beautiful city. They will have everything they may need, besides a loving Roman husband. Your command shall be carried out, but allow me to travel further to the east, for there are no more beautiful women or better spinners than the Sabines. That is true, but the Sabines are proud and stubborn. Proud and yet humble with those they love. Stubborn, yes, in their faithfulness. They're sweet and gentle. And no other women can boast as many accomplishments. I, for one, shall have no other than a Sabine woman. That is up to you. But for the rest, bring women from wherever you can find them. Take this scroll as credential of your mission. You have my pledge, Romulus. I will do my best. I wish you luck, hostess. Being women are to be looked upon with respect. Thank you. 
out of this. You should be so ashamed. Oh, what is causing all this noise? It is all caused by Rhea, as usual, Father. Come here, Rhea. If you wish to speak to me, Father, I would say you come here. Why are you so rude, Rhea? Your temper makes you suffer. Why must you always be a problem? I do not suffer, Father. And if people get annoyed with me, that is not my concern. When you marry, we will choose an honorable husband who will not tolerate your temper. I pity him. The husband I will get will have to be as I want him to be. He's not going to order me. And if he should even try, I'll wrench him and kick him and bite on him. Enough. One cannot reason with you. Return to the palace at once. Ladies, take her with you. Oh, <laughs> shit! My name is Hostess Hostilius. Where do you come from? Rome. You are a Roman? Stand in front of me. Cover me. Do not stare at me. Hide me. Sire, a message from Rome. Your fame as a warrior has reached us, Hostess Hostilius. It is a pleasure to know you, but not so the mission that brings you here. Romulus and you, his follower, have done well, and I accord you merit. But do not lose your heads. The Sabine women are the very best, and the very fact that you have thought of them is only natural. But how could Romulus dare to make such a proposal? Sire, we want them to be our wives. The Sabine women are for the Sabine men, and you must see them as they do, exalted and very high. Please tell your king that our women very gladly go to Rome. But it's only to trade in your marketplace. It is said that wool of fine quality is sold there as many novelties. That is so, sire. Be satisfied that our women patronize your market. May the gods be with you, O hostess. So the Sabines are very high. Higher still are the Romans. What better could Titus Tashus wish for them than to be chosen by our men? 
How dare he scorn our brave and manly youths? There are none better in all the world. Forget the Sabines. They do not deserve the honor of marrying Roman. Really, they are not to be blamed. They do not even know us. Now that you have seen them again, do you still have the same opinion? What are they like? They are strong, yet finely built. Arrogantly beautiful. Their eyes are clear and their looks sweet. Their full-blooded lips are enticing. Ah, and their manners. When they walk, you cannot take your eyes off of them. Cut. True, they are wonderful. But their king has insulted us. We shall have seven wives. <laughs> They will be our wives even though Titus Tasha subjects. We want them. And Rome demands that we have them. Let them come to trade in our market. We shall invite them. We shall make feasts in their honor. They will enjoy the games we will stage for them. But they will not leave Rome. The gods have enlightened you, O Romulus. The beautiful city of Rome invites you to the greatest celebration you have ever witnessed. Merchants from all places are asked to go to Rome to sell their wares. You will find the finest and whitest wool, the essence for divine perfume, exotic amber stone that draws small objects unto itself. And you will rejoice with the games and the dances of war wonder at the sacrificial rites, and admire the great city of Rome. We shall all go to Rome. Not I. As you please, Rhea. But you and Celia will go with us. I do not know if I will have my father's consent. If he should not allow us to go, then of course we must all go. are the daughters of Titus Tashus. How beautiful they are. Hostess, go and ask them to come to the palace. They shall be our guests of honor. Welcome to Rome, noble daughters of Titus Tashus. Romulus, our sovereign, invites you to watch the games in the palace veranda. Kindly thank you, King, but we prefer to walk about. We are eager to see everything. If you'll allow me, I can show you the best sights. There is no need. We thank you.
should enter the contest. Try and win their admiration. Yes, and placed according to your orders. Scent, noble ladies. What a fragrance, scent. Marvelous. How exotic. Delightful. of Rome. Come Romans, take your wives!
of my father, Titus Tashus, I demand it. Demand? Each one of these women has a man and a nation to defend her. Your people should be proud that their kinswomen marry Romans. How can you ask them to be your wives if you take them by force, if you hurt and humiliate them? That is your opinion, but Rome and the Romans need them. You have the power. I beg of you, if that satisfies your vanity. But release them. Do not abuse them. Let them go. Arise. This gesture, no doubt a severe test, has proven your courage, your character, and your kindness. You have been chosen by the gods, and you will be my wife. Never! Enter the palace. Your palace from this day. No. Escort her. But do not touch it.
will be of no avail. Your friends have all met with the same fate. And it would be dangerous for you to be out in the streets. <laughs> Go back and do not be afraid. Have some wine. It will do you good. Look, the door is open, and it will remain so as long as you wish. What is your name? My name is Horatius. Can you guess what the future holds for us? True love. I mean that I will love you greatly. And you perhaps someday. understand what I'm saying. I will show you the things you may make use of. These claws will save you the toil of weaving for some time. These dishes will help you keep house. To tell the truth, I bought them only today. Having seen you, I realize you deserve the best. Do you like them? <clears throat> if you do not like them, at least you will find them useful. Now let us eat. In this cupboard you may keep the food. I expect all this to be much tidier under your management. <coughs> now I am going to untie you so you may eat. But you must promise to behave. I hate you! <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. 
I shall have to feed you. Listen, Romulus, I am not grateful and do not accept these nice manners of yours. I am here against my will. Like the rest of the women, I am your prisoner. You have not fully realized that we want you for our wives. A wife is a woman who loves her husband. And you have won only our repulse and our hate. Give us time and we will win your love. We will never forget your treachery. By force you may perhaps have our bodies but never our wills or our souls. You, Hercilia, have the virtues I have asked the gods to provide in my life companion. You are brave, strong, and understanding. You will be a good Roman queen. Never! I would be ashamed to belong to your city. And you're beautiful. Very beautiful. Even in your rebelliousness, I like you. When my father's soldiers come to free us, you will not like me so much. I will be the greatest of your enemies. Place your lips on mine. Are you going to force me? I was thinking in terms of love. but not violence. You must understand your own people forced us into it. We requested you for our wives and your people scorned us. We Romans want you and need you. Bear in mind that you shall mother the children who will someday own the most powerful city in the world. Forget your resentment and surrender yourselves graciously to the husbands you have drawn. They will share their future with you as well as their enthusiasm and their strength. In every Roman husband, you'll find the man that unconsciously you have wished for. He will protect you. And through his love, you will find happiness. Conceited man! Who has told you that we want the love of your dirty Romans? Women rebel! Do not yield! Show these swine that we are braver than them! Be assured that my father's troops are on the way and will destroy these dirty bandits! Rhea, Rhea! Be calm and return to your houses! Hurry, let us go! Let me through! Don't let the men hurt them. Have no fear. Take your women and guard them. Thank you. 
Penina, my city, will not let the abuse of our women go unpunished. My troops will destroy these Roman dogs. We'll wipe them out. We, the Antimnations, have also decided to punish the Romans. You, Titus Tashius, king of the Sabine, are stronger than any of us. And still you remain silent. We are waiting for your alliance to start the attack immediately. It is not time yet. We must prepare properly. You have two daughters that have been abducted, as all our women. And yet you seem to be in no hurry. Exactly, because our revenge must be assured. We cannot take risks. We must prepare an army capable of defeating the Romans. Our forces are enough to handle those cowards. They're very brave to abduct women, but they have no courage to fight men. My troops are waiting, and the Senecians will march on Rome on the morrow. You should think all this over carefully. It has been decided. When we return, we'll tell you how the Romans fled on our arrival. You should stop him. Surely Romulus expects this action and must be preparing to meet it. What do you think we should do? Don't be hasty. Ensure our victory and leave no Roman alive.
with her sealer, your wife. They were all together at the granary. The gods have shown you the way, and you have led us to victory. <laughs> The future of our city is clear. Let us enjoy our victory and with our women create a new race, an unconquerable Rome. What has happened to you? We are your prisoners just like any man you capture in battle. Dispose of our lives as you have disposed of the lives of some of our relations whom you have killed in the battle. Are you mad? You are our wives. Take those signs of mourning off your clothes. As your prisoners, we are your slaves. But you are not the masters of our wills. We prefer to be killed than to be forever more humiliated with this insistence for us to become your wives. If you like behaving like prisoners, return to the houses of your respective masters. For us, you are and will continue to be our wives. Keep in mind that you have the enemy at home, and we will use the first chance to take revenge. Any damage you do will harm your own property. Any evil done will be your own evil. Return to your homes and care for them. And you, Hercilia, enter the palace. <laughs> husband Horatius has been wounded. You should be decide. We will go with you.
Comrades, the Senecian prisoners, that we want to satisfy all the desires of our women, and accordingly we grant you liberty. You may return to your city any time you wish, and tell the Sabines that these women are our wives, and as such, we honor and love them, and that we will guard them with our lives. The messages will be delivered, O Romulus. Go then. Are you satisfied? Yes, as concerns the Senecians. Why don't you take the attitude of one who is sharing the honor of founding a great city? As king, I tell you, the future of Rome is way above our own interests. And as a man, I explain, Hercilia, that I love you, that I could not do you any harm, that I expect and hope that you will someday love me. Never. We will never forget your villainy. It took King Titus Tatius two years to prepare an army capable of conquering the Romans. And when the time came, they marched resolutely to punish and avenge the unforgivable treachery. Titus Tatius also used cunning and did not attack in the manner in which Romulus was expecting. At dawn, on a predetermined date, a woman opened the farthest entrance to the city.
Mary, we need reinforcement at the battlements. Titus Tashus is at the gates of the capital. Here at last. The time has come. We shall be free. Rhea. Do not fight. You can do nothing against my father. You men, reinforce the fortress. You, guard the door to the palace. You, Horatius. Romulus, surrender! Open the doors! Let our people in! Women, you are mad. For you, there is nothing left aside from what you have in Rome. Outside those walls are our fathers, our brothers, and our people, all of whom we love. And inside are your husbands, your children, and your future. And you may add our hatred. Horatius, have your men take the women to the granary and keep them there during the battle. No, no. Hostess, I leave the defense in your hands. If I should fall, you must watch for the future of Rome. Go then and conquer. Take this. Take it, I say. What for? So you can have your revenge. Take this dagger and bury it in my chest. Have your vengeance on me and do not blame Rome. Only I am responsible. It will be my father who will punish you. If you do not kill me now, your father will die at my hands. He can defend himself. And not only will he finish you, but your city as well. You will have more motives for hating me. If you lack the courage to kill me, go with the rest of the women and share their fate. Do you know why you've been unable to kill me? Because you love me. Many of them may die. Down with the Romans. Have you forgotten everything they have done to us? Let us call the guard. And when they open, we shall all go out. Consider well what you're about to do. Horatius will be the first. No, no, not Horatius. Drop that sword. Now what? Should I understand that you do not want to help the Sabines? It is not you who has to tell us how to do it. You are backing out of it? Betrayer! Your father is at the gates of Rome and you have doubts about your helping him? We are above everything else, Sabines, and we should find a way to fight them. But many of you have had Roman children. Against our wills. Ask them if they want to see their children's fathers dead. You, Sylvia, had a Sabine sweetheart and you were going to marry him. Surely he must be out there fighting for you.
from your Sabine husband who is still with our people. And now you have this Roman son. Both of them are my sons. And the fathers? Which one do you prefer? My sons. Both my sons. There must be a way out. There must be a way out. The men are killing each other. Our fathers, our husbands. And what about us? We have been enslaved by those beasts. Death be theirs! Death to the Roman barbarians! Hostess. Hostess. Hostess! Titus Tatius is also there. He too may be killed. <laughs> and live as orphans or widows. Romans, remember that these are our fathers and our brothers. Sabines, realize that these are our husbands whom we love. Is it possible that you can love the men who abducted you? Yes. 
immensely. If you cannot forgive our marriages, point your weapons toward us. Sabine women, how noble truly you are. Gladly will we give our lives to keep you. <laughs>